Hey guys, um, here at Rally Ready with Texas Dave. It's funny, about two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, before I even knew who Texas Dave was, I was looking at his uh, horrible YouTube channel. Yeah, it's really bad. It's um, really bad. It's honestly. actually a great YouTube channel. They yeah. don't have a good following, which is bizarro world to me, but we live in a weird world. Um, I tweeted that out just like that. And I was like, I was, I was joking around. I'm like, dude, this dude's awesome. And he's legitimate in the space. And then I went, oh, he's sponsored by Black Rifle Coffee. And then I texted Evan and was like, is Texas Dave cool? He's like, dude, he's, he's a loser. Yeah, he didn't say that. No, I saw it. He's lying. I did see the text. I, yeah, it I'm was sorry. Bad. But it was bad. what's interesting about uh, Texas Dave is I didn't think he was a big deal until I saw him on the podium acting awkward around Ken Block. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> He, he, the most awkward moment with him was when he was afraid to hit Kim Block in the face with some champagne. And so usually like you're blasting your buddy, but yeah. you were like. I just hit his junk. Yeah, you're like trying to highlight it like a, like a, like a delightful uh, Victoria's Secret, you know. Yeah. It's Ken's podium, you know, we're all just here to <laughs> drink some champagne up there. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it, it works. Is, it was Ken, it, Ken's yeah. podium. He was on top of it, and yeah. um, he was down below. below. Like this. Was, yeah. I had to bend my knees because they didn't have an actual podium. <laughs> so you squat a little, and then you squat more. And I was like, I'd never done squats. You took right. third. So tell me about how the – when you took third, what does that mean in ARA? So we were third overall at the rally. This is the Lake Superior Performance Rally, meaning of all the cars entered, we were on the overall podium. So in our class, we were first overall in the limited four-wheel drive class. The limited class is essentially mostly stock vehicles. It's primarily going to be STIs, the handful of Evos that still exist um, are in there. Uh, and that means it's basically unmodified drivetrain largely. The, the rules allow for a, a lot of different modifications um, to certain systems, but it's basically it's a stock STI with a roll cage, some good gravel dampers, some decent brakes, wheels and tires. I've been in that class for, that was my second of three events we did this season in it. And other than that, man, I've been out of the sport for like a decade. We just jumped back in. We grabbed a car that uh, had been sitting around for a few years, unrallied, threw a new motor in it. And we're like, oh, this thing's decent. Threw a few more parts at it, a few more parts. But um, what was special for us is that that was, that car was as close to stock as you can get in a competitive rally car. Had decent dampers or shocks. It had, a, you know, a nice cage. It has stock transmission and an almost stock engine. We were just beating the merciless hell out of it. The event we were at had a lot of attrition. Some of the R5, which is like the WRC2 class, higher class cars, had some attrition. Um, and we recognized that our chance to finish well just meant focusing on getting through the event. We did that, and we ended up on the overall podium with a win in our class. Amazing. Congrats on that. Thank you. Hey, here's what I noticed about Rally. I, I like Rally because Rally brings people together. Grassroots, motorsports. I grew up in NASCAR. I actually used to go to daycare and go to the Daytona 500 Speedway. Daytona care. And, wa Woo! and watch, um, you know, my favorite, Dale Earnhardt, Richard Petty, run around. Uh, you know, I grew up in that environment, in that world, and that got very interested in special operations because I drove, I was on a mobility team. So I had to be an expert at least driving defensively in bad circumstances or catastrophe. So there's this surge in this, all these things that are taking place, but I noticed that not a lot of people were having fun. Yeah. And that depresses the hell out of me. I grew up with Budweiser, Bud Light, and girls on calendars, and uh, oh, you know man. the hats. You had the hats that was invented yeah, by motorsports. Yeah, oh, um, yeah. Drinking beer through the tubes. We invented seatbelts, but more importantly, we invented beer hats. Beer hats. Yeah, that's really a, we rally take away. for me. Seeing it is depressing. Yeah, because it seems like the position <laughs> is you got to be. And I hate the word to, to, to use this word uh, loosely, but. Uh, a somewhat of an elitist in some form factor to be able to be competitive. You got to have a lot of money. You got to have a smug attitude. And, and I'm saying the guys in that field are smug because Ken Block, he's in our inner circle. Travis Persona is in our circle. And they're great, amazing human beings. But that seems untouchable for people. Yeah. And then I'll look at you and I'm like, this dude from Texas who started Rally Ready in Dale, Texas, where on Yelp, between him, the gas station, and the church is all that's going on here. It's that's like, generous. It's actually on, on TripAdvisor, to be clear, for six years, we were number one of one things to do in Dale. We're now number one of two, and we're very, we have a narrow lead over the Dale Baptist Church. I added the gas station last night. You did. I don't know if you... Well, you're, like trying two, to, you're trying to bring, you're trying to elevate Dale. You can get two Black Rifle coffee drinks for the price of one at that oh, gas it's station. It's like a fireworks station. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you just got to slip in your pocket. I think it's a fireworks station. slip in your pocket. It's a rural gas station. Yeah. They don't care. So, That's fine. Let's leave a five or somewhere out there. Feed the dog on the way out. All right. I, I, it, 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 it's bizarre world because I want to see more people 
invested in traditional things that I grew up with, especially motorsports. And we started talking and very rapidly have evolved a, a relationship and building this thing that we're doing right now, yeah. which is my involvement in the motorsports, you mentoring me along the way, and then us telling that story uh, and, and letting a lot of people know that it's okay, man. You could, you could start off in your Subaru. The first Subaru that I talked to you about that I bought recently was nine grand. This, this guy was 10 grand. Yeah, you can, and, and to be frank, you can build a whole rally car for not far off from that if you get a $500 Subaru. You know, there's, the options are limitless in that space. And, and yeah, I think that's the piece that for you and I, to some people, 10 grand is, is, is you know, are they're like, oh, you already, you already lost me, right? And it's, motorsport's expensive by default, but I'm with you that we're going to be able to, to, to tell a story and more importantly, show a different side of the sport. The reality of rally is that when you go to an event, there's Ken and there's Travis, they got big fancy stuff. There's, you know, a handful of guys from Ireland who have owe somebody something's construction company who are dumping violent amounts of money in through Lord only knows where they're getting it and we're just gonna leave that alone. But, but then there's a whole, the whole rest of the muddy paddock where you don't ever see any of it because nobody's has the incentive to cover is exactly what we're talking about. It's dudes who bought, you know, a weird old golf that they found in some dude's shed that kind of had a cage and then they finished it with their buddies with a Harbor Freight welder and then they bought some hundred dollar harnesses and they're out there on the like, their, their budget for the entire event is what, you know, some of us are spending on tires. And those guys are there. And that what's unique with rallying is that that culture exists and is thriving in rally because it is much like yesterday. You spoke last night for an hour and a half, ended up being a couple hours. We were having a good time to a group of people who had, when they saw that you were offering a free survival clinic, they are a preparedness clinic. They had a bunch of different hurdles they had to jump through. First one was they had to click a button. That was pretty easy. Then they had to put their info in. You lost half those people when they had to put their info in. And then they looked at where it was and they said, well, you said Austin, this is Dale. Now they had a 30 to 30 minute to two hour drive and we whittled that down. The people who showed up, those are the people who wanted to be there. And rallying is the same way. This isn't a track day that's 30 minutes from your house. This isn't a, uh, an autocross in the parking lot at your, neighbor, your neighborhood you know, high school uh, football you know, parking lot, whatever. This is, you've got to be committed to doing two days of recce, writing your own notes, of having a truck, a trailer, a co-driver, your rally car, tires, all these pieces. And that's still happening at the grassroots level. And what's so special and so magic about Rally is the people who are there doing it know that there's not a dollar in it for them. They're not going to finish at the end of the day and win the, you know, the uh, LSPR 500 and get a big giant golden trophy and then get the cool, you know, Coors ladies to come pose next to them and then get in their million dollar bus and cruise off into the sunset doing cocaine. Like, this is just not happening. Uh, I want that so bad. Right, I know, I know, totally. Well, I, I remember last night was wild, but that's unrelated. Um, those people are are out there having a pile of fun. And like any motorsport, the guys at the top taking it too seriously or taking it seriously, as the case may be, are having a good time. But the guys who crashed six hours ago, who've been f***ing off having a good time and fixing all their buddies' cars with the rest of their trip, they're having more fun. And yeah. that's where, you know, for me, I've turned down a lot of opportunities in this sport over the past two decades because it was the wrong fit with the wrong people who came into the sport with the wrong attitude. What you and I connected on so early and what Jared and I at Black Rifle connected on early and what we're excited to bring Evan into is this is a sport where we can have a ton of fun. And as long as you scale your expectations and your budget to something that's sustainable and, and you know, you can offer longevity, you can say, all right, I'm not just going to blow my wad on three events and then disappear pissed off. I want to get involved with this thing and do it right and do it on the long term. And I think... What we've built with Rally Ready, what you've built with Fieldcraft, what Evan and Jared and the massive team of guys have built at Black Rifle. It's just a really fun intersection of people who know how to take their, their craft seriously, but not take themselves too seriously. I like that. Way to sum it up. Uh, hey, on this first episode, I, it's, we're not doing episodes, but on this first segment, I wanted to kind of give you the lay of the land with me and Dave. And I, I will also want to uh, show you the new car. We want to talk about that in, in a latter episode. So if you like this, go ahead and subscribe. Follow all the content. Help out Dave's channel. There's, man. It's so bad. There's so bad. It's so bad. It's not bad. It's actually really good content. It's great content, but the following is bad. We need Ooh. to get you to like and subscribe his stuff too. Put the Stay button right here. In. Yeah. We're investing like $10 into this this year as a budget, which is more than we had last year. So like and subscribe right there. Hey, till next time, guys. Peace out.